Hi, this is Steve with Me Family Lights. Welcome back. This video is a follow-up to the testing the performance specifications of 12 volt regulated WS2811 pixels. If you find this video useful, click the like and subscribe buttons. In today's video, what I want to cover are three things. First is another way to determine your effective electrical wire gauge. And you could do this with just a standard household multimeter. Why is this important? If you're using the Spiker Lights power calculator, you're going to need to know your effective electrical wire gauge in order to figure out and plan your power injection if you need it and where you want to do that. The second thing I want to cover is how to make these volt ammeters that I'm using for these tests. I was asked in the forums if I can show how this was wired and we'll cover that. And the last thing is I'll go into more detail as to why the electrical wire gauge performance testing I did in the first video works. That gets a little in the weeds, uh, so if you care to know, you can, you can see that section. Okay, with that, let's dive right in. So how does this work? If we were to take a look at one of these bundles of 50 pixels spaced over four inches, essentially you have a 12 volt or five volt. You have a ground line. And when you connect power to it, you basically are running power. And then I'm just gonna notionally draw a resistor here for each of the pixels as they draw power. They will use some of that power. Now this wire, this connection up here, if you assume it to be perfect, there'll be no loss, there'll be no voltage drop, but that's not the case. And in real life, these wires have resistance. So it's basically, there's a little resistance here, a little resistance there as we go down the line. Now to use the voltmeter to check for the, cap the electrical performance of this wire, whether it's the 12 or the ground, ground also has resistance as well. What we're gonna do is not power the pixels, put the voltmeter at the beginning and at the end of the line and check for the resistance across this length here. One issue we'll run into is this length here on 50 pixels is about 17 feet long. And that's not a very long length to measure resistance of a wire. So what we'll do is we'll chain seven bundles together to make a much longer line and see the resistance across that entire length. All right, so here we are set up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bundles of 50 pixels. And the voltmeter here, I've got it set to uh, 200 ohms because it's gonna be a small measurement. And here are the two pigtails. So we're looking at the male, which is the input side, and the female, which is typically the output side. And we will touch our probes here. All right, so that's the top right pin, and it's the opposite corner for the male versus the female. And we'll see what we get. Try to hold it as still as I can. We have 2.9 ohms running across one of the wires and we'll try the other wire. We should get close to the same. And there it is, yep. If I can hold it still, 2.9 as well for the second pin. So I did the V plus pin and the ground pin, which are these top two. The middle one is data. That won't have connectivity straight through because that's connected to the data for each of the pixels. Okay, now we're in Excel. I've updated the uh, spec spreadsheet here. So you can reference the bottom here with some information on how to determine this wire gauge. So the wire spacing we have is four inches between pixels. The number of nodes per bundle is 50. So this calculates for you the total length of wire. I have a little asterisk to the side here because I assume you have a lead in and a lead out pigtail. And those pigtails have the same length, four inches. So I do a plus one, as you can see here. If you need to adjust because you have custom uh, pigtail lengths, then you can do that here. Uh, length of wire is the total across all those 50 nodes. And um, number of bundles, we have seven. So our total length of wire is 119 feet across uh, the seven bundles. And the measured resistance we took, just referencing some notes, 2.9 ohms. So down here, what we do is we scale up 
uh, we have a reference table that we're going to look up the electrical performance for pure copper wire cables. Um, scaling at a factor of a thousand is because the table is referencing resistance in a thousand feet. So we have to scale up 8.4 times. This is calculated based upon the total length of wire, a um, thousand feet divided by that length of wire. And then we've taken the 2.9 and multiplied it by the scaling factor to get to 24.37 ohms. So let's go ahead and switch over to the browser. So this URL is also in that table. It's this engineeringtoolbox.com. Over here they have a reference table for electrical resistance and copper wire. Uh, this is assuming a certain temperature. So we'll take a look at the nominal temperature here, 77 degrees Fahrenheit here in my, my house. And as we scroll down, this is effective electrical wire gauge in this left column. And then the resistance over 1000 ohms here in this column here. And we are looking for a value of 20, uh, 24.3 or so. So as we scroll down here, as the thinner wire gauge, uh, as, as the wires get thinner, the resistance increases. So 24.3 is between 23 and 24 effective wire gauge. I'd just guess somewhere around 23 and a half. So why this is important, once you have that effective wire gauge, then you can use it in the Sparker Lights calculator. So going from here to 23, this would best accurately model what you need to do for power injection to determine your voltage drop and where you want to power inject. In this section of the video, I'm going to show how I made these volt ammeter testers using this little guy here. So I've got a handful of Wago nuts. You're going to need four of them. You'll need a pigtail male for your input and a female for your output that works with your pixels. And before I dive right into this, let me show a wiring diagram. And the reason why I'm going to show this wiring diagram is because each of these little testers is wired differently. And you're going to want to check the diagram with the tester that you got or the voltmeter and meter to make sure that the wires you hook up are correct. So what I'm going to do is draw a notional pigtail here with the data line coming in and we have a B plus. These are not representative of the right order. So you want to make sure you double check that for your pigtails and ground. So for the first thing is a wago nut going out to the output for the data pin on your output. For the V plus, if I draw a meter here, I notionally call this the bolt at the top and the ammeter checking for current at the bottom. There's gonna be some wires coming out of your tester here that's gonna basically say uh, V plus for the voltmeter. There's another wire that's coming out that's for power for your little meter. And these will all get connected together going to your V plus on your out. This is the in. So there should be a, a link there and a link there. So one wire, two wires, three wires, four wires going out to your output. For the ground wire, there is a wire coming off of here that you'll connect and another wire coming off of here that you'll connect to your pigtail ground going out. So as electricity is flowing back through this ground wire, your ammeter portion of your meter can then check for the current. So if we look at how it's put together here, we have our male pigtail on the left, our female pigtail on the right. The first wago nut I'm going to show is this two piece and it's the white data wire coming in going to the white data wire going out. If we look at the V plus, it's the red wire coming in and I have a five piece wago and you'll see coming in, V plus going out. And then here are the two additional wires. One is checking the, the, the voltage of the line. The second one is powering the device. The tricky part is the return. So on the ground, this is the return coming back. This is going to the third wago nut. And in this case, for this meter, the red thick wire is going in. And then the black thick wire coming out connects to the ground going back to the 
original input pigtail. So that completes the, the current part of the tester. In this portion of the video, I want to cover why the testing that was done in the original first video on measuring the effective wire gauge thickness of the wires works. So if we assume we have our pigtail coming in, and we have our V plus, and we have our ground, and then our power supply is in here. If we represent each of these lines, each of these pigtails, again, just treat it as a resistor. It's using some amount of power and there's some loss. Dot, 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 down to 50. This is pixel 50, this is pixel one. This is pixel two, pixel three, pixel four. In an ideal world, if this was a perfect conductor, you'd have no voltage loss. However, what we observed is when I put everything on full white, we are running into voltage loss. And in the end, what you have is this wire act at, acts as a little bit of a resistance here. This wire here has a little resistance. This wire here has a little resistance, so forth and so on, all the way down to the end. In reality, we also have a little resistance here too. When everything is on full white, we have the most amount of current here. I'll just call it I max. And some of it is coming down this way. Then we have a little bit less here, I max minus one, because some of that power is coming this way. And then as we continue to go down, I max minus two, because some of that power is flowing this way and we can continue down the line. Why this is important is there were some questions in the, in the forums, how I did the measurements here and how that's not reflective. I'm using John Spiker's calculator, power calculator. In his calculator, he does actually ca take into account the voltage loss across each of these links. And we'll take a look at that in a second. So when we're running this at 100%, it's incurring the most amount of resistance and the most amount of voltage drop. And so across 50 pixels, measuring the voltage here, V1, me measuring the voltage here, V2, what we're observing is the most amount of loss across this link of wire. And why that's important is the more we stress this wire, the more we can truly get a sense for the quality and the, the electrical performance of this wire. So as we get down to the last pixel here, this would be I max minus 49. Granted, this little last bit here has the least amount of current going through it to support the last pixel here. But as this power flows through here, this voltage is dropping, it's dropping, it's dropping, it's dropping, and it's dropping. And in the Spiker Lights power calculator takes all of this into account. So let's take a quick look. Okay, so here we are looking at John Spiker's light power calculator. And just to check, I've got 50 pixels, 12 volts, 0.6 watts, 4 inches, 100% intensity, and I've gone ahead and selected the 23 gauge wire from the testing we did in the first video. We scroll down here, you can see the voltage drop. We're expecting about 1.1 volts from that previous testing, which is about 9.5%. This one's showing 9% drop, so our effective wire gauge is a little bit thinner than 23, and from the resistance testing method, uh, it's about 20, a little bit more than 23, maybe 23 and a half. What John has exposed down here at the bottom is a pixel by pixel voltage drop. So what his website is actually doing in the background is taking into account that those first few pixels are going to incur the most amount of resistance in the power line, and so the voltage drop is going to reflect that. So he goes pixel by pixel through. Now note, you know, this is cumulative, so as you have more and more pixels running across, the most amount of currents at the beginning, the least amount at the end, but across that whole chain you're going to have voltage drop across the wire. So he takes all of that into account. So what's really nice about the Spiker Lights website is not only can you model a bundle of pixels or uh, a number of bundles of pixels here, you can also then calculate and take a look at the power injection, which also takes into account pixel by pixel current um, and loss across the line. So let's just assume we're taking a 18 gauge wire. The wire length is 15 feet over to the pixel and we want to drop it in at pixel 50. We add the power injection 
And what this is gonna calculate is the voltage loss through the whole thing. And this is also pixel by pixel. And the lowest voltage is right here in the middle. It shows the current per wire. And here is the voltage drop. So right in the middle, you have uh, the lowest amount of voltage with a uh, 2.8% drop. In the begin beginning and the end, he shows a 1% drop. So there you have it. Another way to check for your Pixel Wire's effective electrical gauge, how to make the little tester rigs that I have shown in the first video, and also a little more detail as to uh, why the measurements for the effective electrical gauge done in that first video, uh, how that works. I hope this helps, and until next time, we'll see you.